So they do both. Exactly. Hey, it's something very first lady. Yep. Good. All right. Alright guys, welcome to Surviving Hollywood. I'm Johnny Ray Diaz. I'm Aaron Arnold. I'm Austin Arnold. And today, we got somebody that's worked on dozens of feature films. A very special guest. We've been trying to get this guy for weeks and weeks. It's been weeks. a while. He, is, really? he has said he is our number one fan of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Michael Roger. Testa. There you go. Thanks, Casting guys. director Michael Testa. How you doing? Good, good to see you guys. Yeah, Very thank good. you for finally you know, being able to work all this out. I, I know. Well, we tried it. and we got here. I'm so glad that you're here. Yeah. It's so, fun. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to uh, you know, name off a couple of things that you've done just for the audience as well. Uh-oh. I'm, so, I'm very know. curious what you're going to name off. Well, I mean, I, I want to hear what you have to say. Because, I, I mean, I know some shows that you've obviously casted. I, I had the, the fortunate blessing of working on Stitchers, which you casted that Correct. show. Three Great. seasons, right? Three seasons. Great show. Okay. And you still Thank don't you. remember me. Totally fine. <laughs> I, know I do remember I'm you. Kidding, I'm kidding. I just kidding. remember what you did in the show. All right. He I'll, killed it, I'll ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because I died. No, I'm just kidding. Um, nice. I did Stitchers, Cold Case. Um, you did a couple of... Uh, the original Roswell. Okay. There was another one, The Ringer. Was that another one? Ringer for yeah. CW. Okay, a, cool. A Deadly Adoption. A Deadly Adoption. Let me throw a few yes. words no. at you, Michael. Uh-oh. Love. Sex. The space between us, buddy boy. Those are all three films no, that you cast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you separated love and sex. So yeah. It should be one right. complete thought. Yeah, that's right. That's how he gets you. That's of course. Got me. Just testing you, putting you on edge. <laughs> three of my favorite movies. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Okay. So exactly. of, of everything you've done so far, I mean, like, are you, do you prefer doing the TV stuff or the, the movie? I get asked that question a lot. I like both, actually, for different reasons. Film is a lot more creative. You can sort of take a little bit more time, although nowadays everything's really quicker. But you can take a little more time, kind of get into the minds of the creators, of the director. It's kind of, it is for me, casting wise, much more creative. Episodic TV, I like because it's quick. You only have eight days or seven days or sometimes six days to get your cast together, get it going. So you know it's always kind of moving. And I enjoy that kind of pace. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So, um, can you kind of tell us a little bit more? So, we, before we get too far ahead, um, you know, where you're from? How, how did you get into this whole world anyway? What do you I, love about casting? Yeah. Well, that's a whole, way too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, I'm from New Jersey, uh, and I grew up. Uh, ever watch The Sopranos? That's kind of like yeah. the area I grew up in. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, and I went to Northwestern University, graduated. No, I wanted to be in the entertainment industry in some capacity. Uh, what did you study there? Radio, television, and film. Okay, nice. Um, Howard Stern, your idol? I love Howard Stern. Yeah, I, I do. I do. I grew up listening to it. There's one, mm. there's one quick story. It's so funny how the power of this medium and the power of Howard Stern. I was driving into the city working on a film as a PA. I had to go get something into New York City, and I was stuck in traffic at Lincoln Tunnel. And Howard Stern was on. He was making fun of somebody, and, and it was really funny. And literally every other car that i saw were all laughing at the same time they were i mean every car was laughing at the same time they were all listening to howard stern mm. it was, was really bizarre was yeah. this the Artie lang years no no I'm, I'm, I'm old. thank you I'm, <laughs> I'm older than that no oh okay <laughs> this is when he first started when, when he first started in new york 20 nice. yeah. million viewers it was, it was at one huge. time I mean, more more people that were listening were actually hating on him, which was what boosted the audience. Some people so loved him, some people hated him. No, I don't think you him. could listen to that and hate him and still listen to it. I think they secretly loved him. Yeah, of course. Probably, they, they just they don't want to say it. They just want to say it. Right. Um, and then I, you know, decided to drive out here and with no job and just sort of try to make my mark in the entertainment industry. I said, Go fuck ahead. it. I'll just, yeah, I'll just drive. Basically. Nice. To drive until I hit water. <laughs> nice. And I can't go anymore. You're like, I don't want to go any, into the East Coast at all? You didn't think about... He, he got to Salt Lake I, no, City and was I'm like, I'm here. I'm one of those weird people that it kind of hates New York City. Oh, really? Yeah. I just don't... I don't get it. So and growing up in the East Coast, you just didn't really like it then? or? No, I, I lived 20, 20, 25 minutes outside of the city. And yeah. There's always a... Can I curse on these? Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah Michael. Yeah. <laughs> you just did it. Uh, I was always a pain in the ass to get into. It was okay. always a problem. And back then it was much... You know, it was not a fun place to visit, so... Gotcha. So I hated it. So I decided... You know, why not California? Mm. Los Angeles specifically. So. Wow. Did, you have, did you have an idea in mind what you wanted to do nope. when you were in school? Not a cl oh, in school. Because you um, were doing radio and TV, so it's like, well, were you were thinking about like being like a host, on-air personality? A host? Like, what no, were you no, doing? no, 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 no. I have no illusions of trying to be on okay. camera and whatnot. But um, no, I just knew I wanted to be in 
the industry. I kind of was gearing towards writing a little bit more, just sort of creating stories and whatnot. Um, but I just kind of came out here with an open mind to see whatever kind of fell into. So I had no illusions about what I was going to do. So what was the first job when you get out here? My first job was as a casting intern I, um, at Stephen Cannell Productions. I don't know guys if you remember him. was a big so. TV producer, had like at that time nine shows on the air like wise guy 21 jump streets mm. the 18 you know all these great shows yeah uh great 80s and 90s shows um and i came out here in 89 okay uh and you know at that time variety used to have one ads in the back of the, of the magazine now it's all online but um i just saw an ad for a cast and intern at stephen cannell i studied stephen cannell in college i was like oh i know that guy and let me go. Let's I could see. get coffee. I can get coffee. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was open <laughs> for anything. And it was for cat. And I had no idea what casting was about. Like, yeah. I mean, you kind of know what it's about, but not really what it entails. Right. So I just, I was like, F, you know, F it. Let me just go see what that's about. And I went, interviewed, and got the job. So once you got there, were, uh, did you like the job now that you figured out what it was? Or were you kind of well, like, oh, I don't really know? It was a weird thing because it wasn't any, because I don't think I was hired because of my resume or anything like that. It was just. The woman who was interviewing me, I guess apparently the last intern that was a very traumatic experience, like the head of casting at that time, put this poor girl, I guess, through something and she ran out screaming from the wow. building or something like that. And I remember the very last question that she asked me before I left was, do you cry easily? <laughs> and I went, no, not really. What Why? do you want to hear? <laughs> and she said, well, the last intern here is a very traumatic experience. I don't want to, we really don't want to go through that again. And I made a joke. I remember kind of like, oh, before he makes me cry, I'll take that chair and bash it over his head. Oh. She says, okay, you start Monday. I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that was it. A different time. And uh, did you, once you got there, did you notice that it was kind of uh, an environment where somebody would cry? No, I actually got a re In fact, I'm still friends with, um, with uh, Simon now. He was the head of casting. We got along great. He's got a very dry, kind of diabolical sense of humor, which mm -hmm. I kind of respond to. And I, la I just laughed all the time, and he found somebody who could laugh at his jokes, not, yeah. not cry at his jokes. All right. You're not going to go to HR, right? No, I'm not. Back then, there was, <laughs> there was no, was HR. no HR. There was none of that stuff. <laughs> it was the streets. Oh we yeah. had so much trouble back then, if yeah. we, anybody knew. Back when interns just knew to shut up and get the coffee. That well, then right. I was put on staff like two weeks two weeks later. So wow. Wow. Was quick. Two, three weeks later. So they really liked you. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It's fun. So then from so from there you start off as an intern. We've got the police running around. Yeah, um, it's a very safe neighborhood. Uh, I gotta oh, yeah. go. <laughs> That's our cue, guys. Um, so you start off as an intern. Two uh -huh. weeks later, you, you're promoted to what? An assistant. Assistant. I was filling in for an assistant, I guess, that had to leave. Or maybe it wasn't like two weeks. I mean, it was like a month. Um, her husband, she had to go, or she went on maternity leave or something. So it was on the TV show Hunter. If you remember that TV show. I don't remember that one. Oh, my God, guys. Dude. Make just... me... You know, you don't even know what's your favorite? Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're like, you know, it was about a Los Angeles cop, Fred Dreyer. If you remember Fred Dreyer, was, was an ex-football player, became an actor. It was a very popular show on NBC. Okay, maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you've heard of it. NBC. <laughs> OJ was my favorite football star. Oh, ex-football third actor. Yeah. Uh, I, like, uh, good, good I like him post-football too. Oh. Okay. Well, it's just a lot kidding. about you. <laughs> uh, so anyway. and then I just, I just filled in for her and sort of like you know jump into the deep end and learn casting, you know, without really knowing about it, just on the job. So you've never, you were never like an actor turned casting, like no, some people. Oh, no, no, no. I feel, I know I can never be an actor. I don't know how you guys do it. Yeah. I mean, really, I have a lot of respect for that. It's a, that's a, that's a, it's a hard journey. Oh, and thanks, one, once you were on staff, like what's some of the stuff you picked up that you didn't necessarily learn in school um, that you, that you learned on the job? Well, they don't really teach you about casting in college where I went to Northwestern. So it was, right. it was just, it's a lot of, I think any job in the entertainment industry, it's just a lot of like silly work. It's, I mean, I was thought to be very thorough with my paperwork in terms of like, you know, clearing people and, and credits and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so my experience there was really great because it really, they kind of cracked the whip about all the sort of technical stuff, which can come back to sort of bite you in the ass later on if you don't have it all together. Um, they don't teach you about developing your own tastes and, and specifically for casting in actors, but in other areas and 
your taste about movies or scripts or all that stuff. That's sort of you have to develop yourself. And you develop that not only by what you see and your experience outside of the entertainment industry, but once you're in it by reading different scripts and sort of, you know, you guys are actors. You know, how many scripts do you read? You develop your taste in stories and in films right. and TV shows by the auditions you get. Sure. And what you like and or what you don't you like. Or things you like to watch right, and things like exactly. that. Yeah. So, did you, was your family in the industry at all? No. So you're the first one that... First one, first one in college, first... Oh, really? A lot wow. of firsts for me. He started what? from the bottom. Started from the here. bottom. Now he's here. Yes. My what dad did... owned a construction company in New Jersey. Okay. okay Don't cool. all get crazy. Trump probably did some business with him. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Although I actually hired Donald Trump years ago. Oh, really? That's yeah. a story we'll want to hear. In a movie that you cast? That was a t- it was a really... I can't say. It was, a, it was a, a cable show or syndicated show called Nightman. <laughs> he, he played the Nightman? Yeah, no. <laughs> he played a billionaire. Oh, stretch. Ooh. Now, he obviously doesn't come in and read an audition. No, I mean, that's a funny story. If you want to hear the story now, which yeah. is very funny, where it was a character, I guess, for a billionaire. Um, you almost, you know, he had to try for that one a little bit. Try for that one. really work on and it. And the, uh, the executive producer of the show, the creator of the show, was a very, was named Glenn Larson, who created Battlestar Galactica, really great shows, and really, really big producer. And his wife at that time was JC. And they knew him. You know, and, and JC was great. And she's, JC's great personality. And she's like, oh, what about Donald Trump for this? She mm-hmm. always said, you know, we all, you know I'd love he, to be on one of your shows. On right, you know. Yeah. And I said, well, yeah, she, I'll call him like right now. Literally, she called him on the phone at that, at that time, put him on speakerphone, and she got like right through. And she was like, hey, we got this role. And, you know, it's, it won't take that long when you do it. He says, sure, if you can do it in New York in my office, I'll do it next week. And she's like, okay. And that was it. Now, back then, Trump was very likable. He wasn't as polarizing. Right. He wasn't yeah. polarizing. Yeah. For the younger, a lot of people only know but Trump it was, as president. But it was one of the easiest deals you ever had to make because it was just literally like we thought of it like five sec- five minutes before right. and then boom, it was done. That's a good yeah. get. So. I'd still cast Trump in any short or anything that I produce. <laughs> sure. Well, I'd bring a lot of attention to <laughs> it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> get a lot of viewers. Yeah, but, a lot of viewers. So, yeah, so then that's... And did you see that episode air? I did. I, I mean... It it aired the show aired on like Saturdays at three o'clock. Okay. How'd he do? It was fine. Unbelievable it was fine. ratings. <laughs> right. It was fine. It was like yeah, I mean, I don't remember specifically. It was you know, it was fine. I mean, I guess it was fine. It wasn't like I didn't cringe. I don't remember cringing. Right. Or never, well, I go, was, oh my god, he's the best actor in the world. Yeah. Well, apparently, we got to hire him again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, nice, nice. So then you came over here. Were your parents like really supportive of you taking this huge oh, endeavor? Oh, very. They're, yeah. My parents. Uh, my mother's uh, still here, but they're both. Great, very supportive. Awesome. Wonderful. And all that. Like, S- my dad kind of like, um, there was back in Stephen Cannell, there's an old TV show called The Commish they were doing the pilot for. I remember The Commish. And my, commish, the yeah. Commish. Yeah. And my dad was is very, you know, East Coast Italian guy, big mm. guy and all that stuff. And the casting director at that time um, was Lucy Cavallo, who works at CBS now. And she was like, oh my God, I want your dad to audition for the role of the commission. She was exactly how I pictured him. Like, oh, and he was like flattered, but he decided not to. Oh, <laughs> that would have been great. Yeah. That would have been really cool. Kind of fun. Yeah. Nice. It's interesting. Um, when, when you are casting these things, um, how much input does the director that's, that's working on that episode or that movie, how much input it's, does he have? It just depends. You know, it depends on the project, depends on the director, depends on, you know, I mean, in film, the director has a, uh, um, Usually, usually much more input on episodic. You know, not really. Although, you know, I did a TV show called Cold Case for four years, and on that show, our directors were extremely important. Mm. But on other episodics, you know, if I did ten episodes and I met actually in person two or three of the directors, that was a lot. Right. Do you ever so, feel like sometimes you know more than a director? It's like, oh, the director wants this. I guy. feel like I know more than anybody. So, <laughs> so no. So you know, sometimes you just you know you're, and it's not really knowing more. It's just you know your ideas or your um, thoughts on a project are just different. Right. Um, I remember actually the very first film I actually got cast and director credit on was a movie called Dancer Texas Population eighty one. Really great, sweet film, and the director was. Uh, uh, a director named Tim McCanley, who's a great guy and a really good director and, and a great writer. Um, and it was just we, when I was, as I was casting, as the process was going, I realized that we kind of very different visions about the movie. I saw a very bittersweet angle to it, like Last Picture Show. He kind of was a little bit more Disney fied, if that's mm. the word. 
you wanted it to be good. And I, he had, no, <laughs> no, not at all. We just had different ideas of. They're just of two like, different movies. Yeah, right? two different movies. So what do you right. do? You call Trump, and then well, he's the director. <laughs> he he wins out. He, yeah, right. It's his yeah his vision his kind right of, right gotcha. Yeah, there are plenty of times too as directors where you where I clash with about actors and who's you know right more right for it or you feel a certain way about somebody they feel a certain way about somebody else right that's when I get really that's that's probably the only time I actually show any sort of anger. So at that point you have to if you really like somebody you have to fight for them right is if that how it the usually, director doesn't see it I see, but at, at the end of the day it becomes their call. The director's call. Yes, right? although there are ways to sort of really be a pain in the ass and okay. make sure you get what I get what I want. And but. I imagine that changes versus like a TV network as opposed to like a film because the film might right. Well, you know, well, I mean? you know, I mean, casting now. I mean, back when I when I started, it was there was there wasn't as big a, an approval process as there is now. Okay. Now you know anybody goes, oh, you got to get approval from everybody, you know, um, which is. Probably get in trouble for this, but it's slightly annoying. It's very, it's actually really annoying. Okay. Um, but um, so you had a little bit more um, creative control and creative say with a director or your producers. But in episodic now, it's like everybody's got to weigh in. So the network weighs in, the executives, studio weighs in, executives, studios, directors, yeah. directors producers, yeah. writers. Do they really? It depends episode? on. The, it depends on you know if the showrunner wants. The writers, writer, producer to, to weigh in or not? Right, and then obviously your input as well. Right, yeah. exactly. So it's it is like getting a whole bunch of chefs in one kitchen trying to sort of figure out one recipe. Sounds horrible. Chefs. Sounds like what you don't it's, want. You know, cast is a lot of psychology. Yeah, it's 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 a lot knowing when to when to show people, the show actors to people, when not to, kind of sometimes show them what they don't want or what doesn't work. In relation to everything else, so you, there's a lot of psychology involved. Wow, well, do you ever like bring in two options and one you know it's not what, exactly what they want, you know so what? they no, pick the other I, one? I, I le- you learn the hard way that way because because sometimes then the one that you don't want they'll pick. Oh, <laughs> uh, damn. So like especially if like back in the day when you when you used to actually go to a network and test as opposed to on tape and all that, you know you always always say don't bring in somebody as like a ringer, don't bring anybody you mm-hmm. don't absolutely you know you can't live with for five years. That's a kill. It's, they'll pick that one right away. And then you can't I'm hoping to be the ringer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please, somebody. Exactly. Um, cool. Because the, the reason I asked that question is just because I was looking through your, your IMDb Uh-oh. and you <laughs> That's cast. quite extensive. There's yeah, a, it is. There's a lot of stuff. You it? cast yeah. a deadly adoption, which I, I saw. I did. I did. Aaron and I worked with Rachel, the director. Oh, she's that, great. For that. She's awesome. She was great. So I was just wondering how. Did you work with her? Not on that. On on a, on a commercial. On a commercial. Do you ever on, cast commercials or just film no, and TV? I just film TV. Okay. We, we it was a couple funny. of plays. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, get into that. No, you won't. Uh, <laughs> um, but A Deadly Adoption, that movie has a great comedic talent. Will actors, Ferrell. Will Ferrell, Kristen, Kristen Wiig. Wiig, Wiig, yes. Maybe you've and, heard of him. And, and Rachel sort of does a ton of comedy. How do you how do you cast that? But when I but watched it, was it a straight light well, that was movie. that's that was such an anomaly in terms of even casting and sort of how that come up. I had a, uh, my friend who was the executive producer. I cast some movies for, had kind of told me that this was a possibility, but I, you know you can't we can't you can't say anything of um, getting Will Ferrell or it wasn't getting Will Ferrell. There, he's the one. Was he already yeah, attached? Oh, you yeah, know he apparently he has a fascination with lifetime movies. Like that was oh. his dream. Like that was no. Wow. This was all his idea. Maybe okay. he's seen ours. And Rachel, yeah, exactly. I guess, worked at Funny or Die, okay. and she had directed uh, an MOW um, for um, my friend Sharon, who's executive producer, and I cast a lot for Sharon. Otherwise, so she was like, he I, I, apparently. And if the story's wrong, someone sue me. I don't know. Um, <laughs> she's watching now. She's watching. No, I guess he had said to her like, "Oh, you directed one of these. How do I go about making one of them?" And she's oh, I'll hook you up with executive producer of this movie and that's how that all kind of came about and Sharon's got a really cool sense of humor and this was right up her alley and um and that's how it was born but it was you know it was in it was gestating for a long time before we actually even started casting mm. so when you do start casting there was no you're no just looking for oh no, no script no script we had to do a fake script but which, you, and the problem was you know it was the fake script was really bad and so people would pass and I'd be like, don't pass. You don't want to pass. <laughs> yeah. you know? like, yeah. I can't tell you why, but don't yeah. pass. You know. And But were you specifically looking for, hey, we're not going for a Will Ferrell comedy per se. We're no, going no, no, for no. straight No, 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 no. It was completely, 
played completely like a real, you know, right. kind of the complete straight. And that was the idea, you know. And I guess the idea that it's them, uh, it's Kristen and Will in it is the wink and the nod, you know, yeah. kind of sly thing. But definitely, you know, I guess the idea was, and he didn't. I uh, apparently getting this. I get this all secondhand, so you know, if it's not exactly right. But you know, he didn't want any promotion. That's why it was so secretive because he kind of wanted people to come home Just like surprise. drunk on a Saturday night and like yeah. turn on TV and go like, "What?" <laughs> That's like, what I loved about it. <laughs> right, right, exactly. But um, um, but the cat got out of the bag like a couple of months before. And, and oh, so, really? Yeah, but you know, he had signed the NDAs, and yeah. uh, everybody kind of freaked out when they found out the actors when they when they got the roles and they freaked out. And we weren't going for any. All the supporting cast was not anybody. You know, we didn't want to overcast it. Mm. Right. You know, let's get Melissa McCarthy to play the, the, yeah. the adoptive woman, the adoption agency woman. You know, it's just, it wasn't, we didn't want to do that. We wanted actors that would, you see in Lifetime movies a lot. To just be the same. Yeah, just be un, kind of unknown yeah. pretty much. Yeah. 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 Does that change the budget at all? Yeah, once really those people are attached? Or is it nope. still like, no, we're going to keep that Lifetime nope. budget, guys? Okay. Something was, so, I mean. I mean I so we'll figure out 125 hell. a day. <laughs> Yeah. No, it was, it was, <laughs> we were we were we were the big budget lifetime movie. We were the uh, SAG modified. Oh, oh, I like it. So I think the budget was like seven hundred thousand, maybe a little less than that. Nice, still good. Yeah, still good. So it was cool. fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I like that movie. It was. It's it's odd. <laughs> I mean, it's odd in a really good way. It's just yeah, odd. I kept waiting for the wink and the nod of Will Ferrell. <laughs> I didn't want it. <laughs> exactly, and and that was in a sense the wink. So. Well, my best friend is an actor. He plays the sheriff in it, and I guess he has. Uh. He has a sort of wink and a nod moment that he didn't realize was the wink and a nod moment, and apparently that's like that's like Will's favorite line in the entire movie. And oh, nice. Oh, really? Yeah. What's the line? God, I could forget. I, mean, <laughs> I forget. Something about like you know you know the real identity of you know whatever the woman's name is. It's a very kind of dramatic moment. Yeah, I, cool. I, I can see it. That sounds good. I like it. You got a question, right? You know what, Michael? I did have a question. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting to get a casting director in here. You only do um. You only do union stuff, right? Yes. Well, it makes sense. They call me Mr. Non-Union. So uh, my question is... <laughs> Are you is, really still on union? No, I'm union. I'm just kidding. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> I once cast twins. One was union. The other one wasn't. Ooh. Ooh. Taft Hartley, that other guy? Yeah. <sighs> I was paying the ass. Was like, <laughs> oh, I was one being one. So. All right. Here's my question, okay. Michael. <laughs> I, I went in for this commercial the other day. Again, I don't do commercials, so I may not know this answer to this question. But go ahead. I'm not even going to say what the commercial was. That's how... You don't even need to know for this story. I went in for this commercial, perfect for the role, Michael, casting white in, guy. In, in your in your mind, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, no, 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 no. I was perfect for the role, Michael, casting upper twenties, white guy, curly brown hair, slightly comedic. Killed it. Oh, good question. And, so and what? The comment or never got a call back. What's up with that? <laughs> okay. How, how am I supposed to know? Michael, I need an answer. Maybe you're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. uh, that was my only question. Wow, I'm that's glad it. the truth yeah. comes out, man. Now I don't know how people cast commercials, going for commercials. That's like a isn't it like a cattle call? That's I mean that's sometimes. It's, it feels that way sometimes for yeah. sure. Sometimes with twins, it's less of a cattle call. That's true. Yeah. So what was it like when you first branched off on your own? Yeah. Casting. Like, what was that process like? You were working for an office, and now you're like, no, hey, you know what? I'm oh, just going to cast well, my own thing. I mean, the, I mean it, well, when I mean, you say branching, there's a couple times where I branched off on my own. So, um, okay. Um, you know, you work your way up. And then uh, my last job as a casting associate, which is sort of like when you're kind of underneath somebody, the last, the highest way, you can, the highest level you can achieve by being second fiddle, I guess, okay. was for the pilot for Everybody Loves Raymond. Mm. Um, Never heard of that show. One of the best shows ever. With a Just. fantastic casting director named Lisa Miller. Um, Lisa Miller Katz. And I just decided, like, the day... Well, the, uh, the airing of the pilot, the taping of the pilot, I got, I was passing by you know, one of those buzz saws where people, like, with the tree trimmings. And, the, and as I was passing by, a piece of wood went through the window and hit me in the eye. And Yikes. Cut, cut my... Uh, cornea. Cornea, thank you. Um, so I couldn't go to the taping. So all I had to do is literally lie in bed with my eyes closed and not do anything. And I had a lot of times thinking, I'm like, and I said at that point, I'm like, you know what? Any other casting job I get is going to be as a cast director. I'm not taking mm -hmm. any more associate, whoops, associate jobs, nothing. And of course, like the next day I got offered three like killer associate jobs. One was like 
to work on The Devil's Advocate with Al Pacino. Ooh, oh, yeah. And all this stuff. And I, I love like, that movie. And I was like, nope. And I can't <laughs> say, nope, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do mm. it. And then I just, a friend of mine, an agent, uh, a friend of mine called me up and said, I have a friend that who wants to branch off and open up his own casting office. He casts MOWs. Um, he wants a partner. His name is Dan Shaner. And, you know, I think you guys would be perfect together. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. I didn't even meet him. I never met him. Mm. And um, then I started a casting company with uh, another casting director named Dan Shaner. And then about seven years on seven years ago, eight years ago, I branched off on my own. So if you never yeah. had that happen to you, you might still be doing associate work to this day. Of course. You have to take, and, and, and anything, even with a job, acting right? career, yeah. anything else, you have to sort of take that chance. You have to take that leap. And, you know, there's a lot in saying no sometimes. Yeah. You know, define what you don't want to do. Define what you don't want to, you know, don't want to be. I actually always wonder how, uh, how is it that you guys find work? Is it all word of mouth? Like it's like anything else. It's word of know? mouth, or you know, it's you production people see something that I've you? cast and they, they okay. approach us. Okay. You know, you're like like an actor. You're as hot as your last job. You know, if you're you know if you have something that so you're casting a hot show. They're yeah, like, I got to get them. You know, to help and, cast and this. our first year of casting together, you know. Dan and I did the uh, the first the original Roswell. Um, okay. We that was one of the hottest casting jobs to get that year, and, and we were you know we had done just a bad cable show before that. So you can't say bad cable show. Just a cable show. No such thing. No such thing. Before that, and and that's about it. And a movie, um, and we got this job that every casting director in town was sort of going after, um, and so that was a big hit. And, that kind of propelled us. And that same year, we had two films go to Sundance. So it was all kind of like, which, you know, we're lucky. And I'm very lucky in my career that I never got pigeonholed into being like a TV casting director or a film casting director. I kind of just did both. maintained both. And, yeah. I, and I very consciously do both or try to do both yeah. you know, as I moved along. I, so. Do you look down on people who cast commercials? I don't. I sort of admire that. Like, I mean, I don't know how they do it. It's so quick. You look, right? up, yeah. you look up to them. I look up to them. Yeah, me too. <laughs> What about if you're casting a student non-union short film? <laughs> I've done that before. You look down on them? <laughs> I don't look down on anybody. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> hey, but, I don't look down on anybody because we will do podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, on that note, we'll see and, you guys uh, next time. When those guys get here, let us know. <laughs> um, but on the student front, we actually had some potential students, students of life, submit questions for a casting director. And okay. if you'll indulge us. Sure, go ahead. We have 12 questions. We told oh, them. Oh, my God. I'll pick three. I'll pick three. <laughs> Yeah, but well, uh, I don't it, care if the answer. I'm, that's why I'm here. We have you for the full yeah. three hours. Yeah, full three hours. Joe Rogan right, style. Good. All right, good. Uh, and if you want to submit a question, you have one out there. Submit it to Surviving Hollywood Podcast at Gmail dot com or any of our social medias. And please, if you're on iTunes listening, give us a good five star review. That being said, one question that um, somebody asked is give him the best question first uh, i, I, didn't, I didn't label him let's, let's okay let's he, get there here's one i used to get brought in to a certain casting office all the time now i don't seem to get called in i'm a better actor now any advice on how i can get another shot in the room the desperation stinks on this guy didn't you ask Holy that? <laughs> <laughs> was that an aaron question or? <laughs> yeah this one's from aaron i yeah. wrote that i don't know you know it's uh, that's i'm not that cast director so i can't sort of figure out what's going to work for them but I mean, I've had it happen before. Sometimes you just like you get tired of an actor. Like you see them all the time. It's like they're not booking. So let's put them to rest, for lack of a better <laughs> phrase, for a while wow. until he's, he's you know. Dead to us. How does he no, get back in? Dead to us. I, mean, I never. You know, I'm not like that. You know, I have to understand. There are some casting directors. If you go in once and you, you're not very good, you're not very good for seven, eight years. They just. They, hard for them right. to think beyond. I think I'm getting what you're saying. So to help answer this question, listen, we know you're better, buddy, but you're just not up to the par everybody else is. So I'd move on to a different I, And office. I wouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. You got to figure out ways. I would, I would expend your energy trying to get into other casting offices as a choice of trying to get back into that one casting office. I think that's... So you're saying don't bother even trying to get He shouldn't DM in. you No, I mean, Instagram. listen, if they brought you in a lot, that means they like you. But uh, they they like you at some level. But suddenly right? they just stopped and they're like, well, we've had enough. Yeah, they could be. Or I don't yeah. know. You know, maybe he went in one day and you know, I don't know. He didn't put deodorant on that day or something. You know, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why they they stopped seeing him. Great follow up question to that. What is your one like no no oh, in an audition there's where you're lot, like I'm never I'm I'm, no I'm blackballing you never coming back really again. I don't really do that. Okay. Never again thing. You know, because it's 
it's not fair and you know every experience is sort of different and so we all have a chance we'll have a chance um <laughs> and i don't know a lot of cancer nurses that do i mean i think that's sort of a, a myth out there but uh, dan the, bell <laughs> okay the don't do's i mean like i don't know i, I don't i'm not a big prop person okay because my attention span is not very i don't have a you hate carrot top Oh, prop brings comics. props on prop stage. Anyway, yeah. so yeah. sorry. So an actor would bring it. Reference I didn't get. <laughs> an actor would bring in a prop to like a or like put a prop. I've on had tape. somebody bring in a real gun. I've had somebody bring in a, a, a complete a real gun. A real gun. Not even a prop gun. Not even a prop gun. A My complete God. dinner with like chicken and iced tea and plates <laughs> and all that stuff. Hang I, on, guys. I need to warm this up real quick. That just sounds <laughs> annoying. Yeah, <laughs> but they were green, obviously. Like you. No, could, no. One was one. No, they weren't. Oh. One was Will Ferrell, and you know, booking <laughs> it. <laughs> But no, uh, so for me, props just take my attention right away from whatever, what anybody's doing. Mm. Do you let them continue with the audition, or do you kind of like, all right, guys, let's well, hold the that real, out? The real, you want to see what the happens? The real gun one, I was like, you got to stop, because I just had experience in my personal life with the real gun, which was not very good. And I was just like, it kind of freaked me out. So I was just like, right. get out. <laughs> just leave. It's a Second Amendment right, actually. But the guy... This is the carry state. Um, <laughs> but the... Um, the dinner guy, um, I was fascinated by how far he was going to take it. And right. he took it all the way. It so it fantastic. did pique your interest. You remembered it. Well, I don't remember what he was doing. Like, I don't remember him saying the words for the right, scenes. I just remember right. him taking out the chicken and the peas. <laughs> You're like, lunch is soup. coming up. So. I was like, wow. And, the, you know, and I'm a cook, and I'm like, oh, that chicken looks disgusting. Like, how did, how did he cook that? Like, that was where my, my mind was going. So. Let, let me ask you a question, because um, sometimes we help each other record self-tapes. Oh, boy. And I once was helping Johnny <laughs> record a self-tape, and this guy's a booking machine. He actually ended, no, up, no, no, he no. ended up booking this without taking this one piece of advice that I threw out in the ether and suggested, because he was kind of going for the role of a, like a bad guy or of an evil guy. And his, um, he had access to this pet rat. And I was like, do it. And it would just sit on your shoulder. Or on don't your reference it at all. You told him, you said, don't reference it at all and just have it on your yeah, shoulder. Yeah. I said, I said, I don't know if I, I said, do the audition, uh, put yourself on tape, except with the rat who just like stays with you. It's your, like, it'll look like more, Interesting, and he ended up not doing it, and I think he got it anyway. But was but that now? That? I understand why you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a rat. <laughs> exactly. I didn't realize Michael was a comedian. All right, there we go. Exactly. Finally. So, so you think that would have been a bad idea with the rat? Awful. Uh, <laughs> because right, because you focus more on the character, right? It's like you focus on the rat. The rat. Why is there a rat? Just extra. Right. Who could take away from the rat? I mean, the rat's going to be the star of the piece. Right. Yeah. So makes sense. You know, makes yeah. playing second fiddle to a rat. All mm. the time. All right. You were right, Johnny. Good thing you didn't do it. Next question. <laughs> um, do you, when you do cast, which is uh, every day, do you cast primarily from talent agencies that you trust? I always feel like my submission won't even be seen unless I get a bigger agent. How does the little guy make it in, into the room? You know, I don't know. You know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like, it's, just, it's another question that gets all the time. It's like, you know... First off, I'll say, especially nowadays, everybody give your agents and managers like a break. It's tough. If it's tough for actors, it's you know quadruply tough for agents and managers. It's tough, tough because no, there's no pitch calls. I mean, I don't take a pitch call. I've been taking a pitch call in you know years. Unless it's attached to a twenty dollar Venmo. Over the <laughs> okay. No, a pitch call is where somebody organizes a meeting to pitch their client to you. They call up and say, "Hey, what about you know yeah. for Johnny for this yeah. role?" So you know? just don't take those. I don't calls. take them. Just why email me or like you know be, I, you know the way the technology is. You know you can sort of just sit at home in a little box and cast. You know, right. You need to, um, so it's tough, and you know, I, listen, I've done. I used to do, and since I started casting, I worked on in some capacity. Assistants, uh, associates, casting director, an hour show for like 20 straight years based here in LA. So I had good relationships with every sized agency, and every size agency has its needs. Um, yes, sometimes you do kind of rely on the agents that you know that you've booked with before, but not exclusively. I mean, that, that I think any good casting director wouldn't do that because you're, you know, there's a, there's a, t a lot of actors out here. Yeah, you know, and so you have to sort of get to know. That's, it's my job to get to know as many as possible. But um, when you are, you know, in your third season casting a cable show, whatever it is, do you primarily just go like you're going to start at the top agents, right? Because they have the best actors, and then if you need it, maybe for a co-star or whatever, you'll go to. The, 
the last. Well, yeah. Years. I mean, listen. You know, bigger age is not gonna. It's not gonna have an actor who's gonna do a co-star. Right. For the most part. Why? That's. It's a whole different kind of level of playing field. How you get to that level uh, of playing, uh, you know, that's there's many journeys that people get up there. You know, some get up there right away. Some t- take some 20, 30 years to get up. You know, um, it. Yeah, I mean, you just should, hey, I just don't, you don't really go down. I hate, episode is a different animal than like you know film. In a film, if you have two leads, you know, I think for the most part, your leads of your movies are coming from just a few agencies because those are the people who are more high profile. And any good producer who's a business person is gonna want people who have <clears throat> high profile in their movie. It just right. generates more business. It's a bigger draw. It's a bigger draw. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's and those come from bigger agencies because they have those actors and actresses. So what about if you're looking for? Uh, I guess what do you, what do you what does an actor need to do? Maybe is a better question to get into a room they've never been into. Like if you're like I want to see a fresh face or whatever it is. Like what. What do they need to do to kind the of the pizza box? I, again, I, I get that question asked a lot, and I, yeah. I always my my answer to that question is like I don't know because I'm never on that end right. trying to get in. Right. But so, when you're when you're looking I mean, at I submissions, draw from, I draw from people from all. I mean, it all depends on what I'm looking for with right. each role. I attack each role uh, kind of differently. Sometimes I focus on someone's voice or their physicality or their you know their looks or whatever. I don't right. you know or you know if I know. If I trust in somebody's acting ability to go do that, and I rely on those people, so it really is very subjective and very and varied from role to role, from project to project. Um, so I don't know, on the other end, how to get in front. People say how to get into your office. I'm like, yeah. I don't know. I think it's kind of easy, you know. Just, I mean, just from my perspective, in. it's always very easy, because I'll sometimes I'll like I'll watch a TV show and go, oh, that person's interesting. Let's try and look them up and say, oh, and remember them, and so then I like, cast something else. I'll just you know call them in or you know, oh cool, have them come in. Or sometimes it's I always say this is a joke, but it's true. Like, you know, I, I, I'll remember you more if, you know, I see you at Whole Foods like three days in a row or something like that. I'm like, oh, okay, there's that guy. You what know? Whole Foods do you shop at? And, yeah. The West Hollywood <laughs> Fairfax one. <laughs> um, and, you know, social media is the tool for that, too. I mean, I, I don't subscribe to the social media. You need the number of followers. Like, all oh, that's that's good bullshit, I think. Um, and any project that's sort of going by that standard is to me, sort of a project I don't want to be affiliated with because it's not what we're here to do. Um, but I think social media, Instagram, and um, is sort of like the postcards of years ago where I may be like scrolling through Instagram and like, oh, what about Mandy June for that role? It reminds me that you're out there. Doing something. Doing something or just yeah. reminds me that you're there. That you're alive. You're yeah, alive. They have a heartbeat. But I won't go on social media to look for actors for the role. Sure. Unless they've taken a picture in front of a pink wall with wings. Oh, God, really? <laughs> Where is that wall? I'll delete that. Somewhere, Somewhere around here. There's a it's bunch on of Melrose, them. I think, right? Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. That's obnoxious. Sh- should we go there after this? Yeah. Um, uh, no. Oh. Have you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that big fat no. Go Have ahead. you ever uh, discovered somebody like the, you know, young, fresh actors come to Hollywood like, oh, I'm going to be discovered in a Starbucks or something. Ever just looked at somebody be like, hey, can you come in tomorrow and read? I've actually done that a little bit in terms of not like, I mean, there was, <laughs> this lady was freaked out by me. Um, <laughs> I was in some lady, some uh, woman in an elevator once. I was just, she had the exact same look of the character looking for her. And we're in the same building that we're casting out. I'm like, oh, we want to, you know, come in. Um, and there was a movie that I was doing that never got made. And it was sort of like a cross between. Uh, it was like Lord of the Flies set amongst homeless teens here in L.A. And hmm. All right. Um, Interesting. And there was a character that was a transgender uh, homeless kid, you know, who was going through the change and had started taking some of the drugs and was also a male prostitute. It was like it was a whole wow. myriad of stuff. Complicated. So, you know, and back in the day when, when Santa Monica Boulevard was not as safe as it sort of is now, I guess I actually went on the streets and passed out my card wow. to like, Homeless kids. To, to wow. Find, wow. To find, because that's, you know, you're not going to find that with a Beverly Hills kid with a mother driving to the audition in the Mercedes. They're not, right. It's, that's going to be hard to right. sell. You find any good ones? That's how you got your I did different. actually, but the movie never got made. I felt really bad. No. They, I, they kind of really liked him, but I would have to like call him at certain spots, arrange, because there's no cell phones back then. So it was at a range, you know, be, you know so which cell phone do you use all the time? I'll call yeah. you tomorrow too. Like be there. And, you know, <laughs> not cell phone, but um, pay phone. 
Right, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is back in the day. Back in the day, there were phones. And what is a pay phone, wires. by the way? Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, a phone you pay for? Hey, what's that guy doing now? That guy that cast. No, we never got cast. Okay, the, wait, the, the guy that he found. Right, right, right. I don't know. His dreams were crushed, and he went downhill. I mean, he was a homeless. I guess I think he was you know, prostitute, too, so I don't know. The movie sounds ahead of its time, though. Whoa. It does. I think it may. It was, especially if it was back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah, so it's. But in a. Uh, it's a phrase I love. Back in, back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day. Well, in the D. Like the song. In today, yeah, how, that? how important is it to? Uh, <laughs> oh, did you have a question? Uh, we we had one guy ask, and he's just being a just one being a troll. He's like, uh, why don't you cast more Asians? <laughs> and he he doesn't know you because we know just, I just said casting director, not I didn't give a name. But how important is diversity? And he's not even Asian. Today, post-Trump in office, how important, or is it nothing really changed? Oh, it's extremely important. Oh, it, it, it has always been important. Has yeah. your job changed, like your daily? Um, <clears throat> yes and no. I mean, it, it's changes that I think we're more conscious of it, and I think in a really good way. And, you know, you want, to, for the most part, depending on what story you're telling, to reflect society around you so that you're more conscious of that. Um, but it doesn't really change in my mind. I sort of always sort of bring in really great actors of all, diverse actors of all for every role. I've always done that. For, you know. So it really hasn't changed for me that much. But the networks have changed. And now they're more conscious of it, I think in a really good way. Yeah, they're good. more conscious of it and, you know, and making sure you're following, you know, following, you know, there are guidelines about diversity and making sure every episode and every show it is, is diverse. An inclusion writer? Is that what that is? I know. Something, something like, that. like that. I don't yeah. know. Once I, you know, I, I have <laughs> I issues with stuff that becomes mandated. Right. It's, right. It's like you have to. You have to, as right. opposed to sort of like let's be conscious of it and, sure. and, and fighting, you know, fighting outside of all the mandated to, yeah. to do it. Is just find the best person for it. Uh, no. According to them, they have to check the boxes with diversity first and then go towards talent. Who said that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, An Aaron Arnold up. quote. Yeah. No, you know, I mean, listen, when I was in Cold Case, you know, we, we always. There was, our, I don't know, the crux of our show was the casting in terms of sometimes we had to find two actors to play the same role. So looks were very important. So people had to match because they would flash in between scenes and people would match. So we always came up with this sort of dichotomy of like, who's got the better look as opposed to who's got the more talent. And we always erred on the side of talent just because it would tell the story better. And it's almost yeah. you know, the same thing. You, you, know, you err on the side of talent to tell your story. So what is your opinion on YouTube stars? Because I know for a while, They're for fine. a while, it I mean, seemed like there was a lot of them just getting I, I opportunities. Get I don't, I don't, I don't bring any negativity or yeah. any positive, extra positivity or extra <laughs> negativity towards it either way. Because bring it, you know. Listen, I, I, I hired and Stitcher's Logan Paul. Yeah, and you know he was fantastic. I've I mean, worked with like, him on yeah, music video before. Him a lot. Very professional. Very did professional. not act like at all like his like YouTube. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he played a character very much like the persona he puts out there. Oh, he did. So I don't know okay. whether or not it's. And he came into the audition kind of like that. He came out like a hoverboard or something like that, which, which was great. It was exactly what I wanted. You know, then, then there's, there's the um, YouTube star and, and social media star, Anna Ancana, who I hired in Stitchers as well. And I read, you know, hundreds of actresses for that role. And she was the most prepared. She wanted it more than anybody. And that goes a long way. So there's no, just because you're a YouTube star, there's no, I guess, reason why you can't act or not so it all comes down to what you do in the room yeah it's like, the, it's like, it's like the athletes with models you know some people oh you're a model that people would say that or you're an athlete wanting yeah. to be an actor oh you know sometimes some of them are really good oj simpson was a talented dude right talented naked dude. gun don't get me started <laughs> Captain <Funny>. Burn one <laughs> funny movies cool what are the and we have we one more question sure, sure. one more question michael um make it good okay <laughs> this is this is the best one we have um oh wow I'm a fat guy trying to make a name for myself in the modeling slash acting industry. Most of the casting calls I see for are people in shape. Uh, is there a place where I can go to see plus size jobs? My management team submits me to some, but I'd like to see for myself. Hmm. Is there a place? What do you mean? <laughs> I, I regret picking this oh, question. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that that's, 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 I mean, I, you know, I mean, there's only room for one. Or, another question. One All or, right. I mean, this not, is, not, not to, this your question. It's a very important it's question. It's not my question. Whatever. Well, there's only room for one or two fat guys in Hollywood, right? And then there's the guy on Lost, Hurley, and then Horatio Sands. Jonah Hill. 
Uh, hey, this is a better question. This is a better question. And this yes, is let's pick a different uh, um, question. I'm and saying, this I'm is out of this one. <laughs> hey, is there is there an example on something on TV or film right now that you did not cast where you say to yourself, "Wow, that's great casting." Oh what? yeah, God, always all the time. So what shows are you like in now? Uh, <laughs> well, because I'm also geared towards, I'm very sort of cynical now about about shows and I think, or even movies. I think people use the word "great" very loosely, and so there's really not a lot, right? I mean, I think the last show that I was really into was Schitt's Creek. That was fantastic. I hear that's great. Yeah, I heard it's really yeah, funny. No, I hear it's really funny. It's really funny. Um, and I'm not a, like a big comedy kind of person. I tend to be more dark. I loved Mindhunter. Oh yeah, yeah like oh, that me funny too. story about Mindhunter was season one was great. The, as a, um, an actor, Cameron God, what's the last name? Cameron Britton, who played Ed Klemper on Mindhunter. Yeah, he was. And so, when I he watched, was so good. he was so good. The right? big guy. So good. Yeah, the, the big the guy, right? Guy. Right. Yeah, well, he, was good. he I, as he, I, and I hate to, when I'm watching a show or a movie. I hate to sort of take myself out of it by like looking up who that actor was, or because I kind of like wanted to get into it. But I kept saying, "Oh my God, this guy's a really good. Wait, really guy? We're, yeah. Really get a guy that big, and he can really act." And I'm going on, but he looks so familiar. I'm trying to figure out what he was. So when, it was, when I finished binge watching, I went to IMDb, and I'm like, "Oh my God, it's Cameron. He did 26 episodes of Stitchers. He was one of wow. my utility players, and I had like no, oh. like it didn't dawn on me wow. that it was the same guy, wow, the same actor. So um, he was really good on that. And he was good. He was great. He was really. He good. won an award, I think, or he was nominated, nominated, nominated for nominated, an Emmy yeah. and a Golden Globe, I think. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I love my hunter. And you discovered him. I don't. I hate. I, I, <laughs> by the way, I hate that phrase. I oh. do. I hate that phrase. We didn't You're discover welcome. Any. You don't discover. Like, oh, we don't have to go like, oh, there's a rock. Oh, look, there it is. There's <laughs> like, you know, there's James Franco. You know, it doesn't work that way. Right. You know, kind of like you know, all we do as cast directors, we provide opportunities for people to discover themselves. Oh, like I like that. that. Right? Put that on like a T-shirt. That. Put that on a T-shirt. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I don't, I don't, I just don't like that phrase. It just kind of. Hey, get rid me. of the phrase. We'll never say it again. I didn't discover. I discovered them. I molded them from clay and they became <laughs> Brad Pitt. You know, it's ridiculous. Is there ever some kind of competition, competition between you and other casting directors though? Like a sense of like, I oh, I can't believe I they got, think so. he got that show. You know what I mean? Like, I really wanted that one. No, really, it's like anything else. Like, you're an actor too. You can go off a role. You really want to roll someone else because you're like, oh, oh, but, but. No, I'm, I'm for the most part kind of really happy when that good casting directors get good jobs or nice cast. I'm I'm more PO when somebody like I don't like gets a job because they're a jerk. <laughs> yeah, there's jerks in every profession. It's true. Let's name names. No. <laughs> oh, okay. I got in trouble at a class that way once. So oh really? Yeah, let's not name names. Let's not do that. I don't let's think I, I don't think beyond my little world right now. So I don't think I forget that people are gonna be listening to this. H- hundreds. Hundreds. We have four live streamers right now. Really? No. There's like I'm sure throughout. I'm sure there's so many actors that always come up to you at film festivals or wherever, and at the Whole Foods and ask you questions. Do you ever have questions for actors? Like, can you move your cart? Because that Whole Foods is small. Yeah, exactly. It is small. Yeah. I was like, I didn't realize. I never. I I only went to that Whole Foods for like a long time, and then I went to the one in Glendale. I'm like, oh my god, this <laughs> food court's fantastic. Um, what was the question? <laughs> it was, what are the sales right now for Whole Foods? No, it no, was... It was, it was uh, rotisserie chicken. Actually, no. Because <laughs> I, I, I got the notice today in the mail. Like, oh, Whoa. I got to go get one. I should get one and use it in my next audition. Totally. Um, <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever have questions for actors? It's like, so many people ask you questions 24-7. Right. We're bombarding you. I, no, I, I'm just sort of fascinated by actors. I think it's a, I think it's a unique job, and, and it's a really... Tough job because I can't really think of another job where your your material, your output, what you create or what you promote is yourself. It's a there's a lot of like psychology behind that whole thing. I always, I still get, you have to be psychologically strong to survive and be want to be an actor and keep going at it. Um, so it's not that I have any questions for actors. I just kind of like admire them and sort of like to watch them. Nice observe you guys like you're. I like no, no, it. I do. I think it's. I think it's a unique. It's a unique job. It's a. It's a difficult job. Uh, and, and also, the problem is uh, people who aren't in the business or who aren't actors don't realize how difficult it is. Yeah. 
um, which would probably be frustrating. Everyone think, oh, we doctor, oh, you're a doctor, oh, that's tough. You know, everyone knows that. You know, oh. right. or my my high school people with an actor, you're like, oh, you're an actor. Oh, okay. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or my high school friends will just be like, hey, why don't you get on Game of Thrones? Yeah, totally. Like, totally. Well, it's, it's been the same thing with casting. Yeah, like people don't really understand what we do. Like my mother. Yeah. God bless her, had no clue, like, what do you do again? <laughs> and when I started doing Cold Case, I called her up. I said, okay, there's a show that's coming on. Yeah. So, you know, watch it. I think you'll like it. She's like, where are you on the show? I don't well, see no, you. She, she watches the show. She called me the next day. She goes, oh, I watched the show. I go, and she goes, I really enjoyed it. I said, oh, she goes, you know, they get some good actors on that show. <laughs> and I'm like, that's what I do. <laughs> she's like, oh, like for the first time, it dawned on her, like, right. what I did. Wow. Cool. So this is, you know, 20 years after I started doing it, so. Nice. Luckily, we have podcasts like this right now for all the moms out there. To enlighten all of us. My mom can't even text. She's not, she, podcasts would be like, what? What? Hey, one day. What that? I'm still trying to explain it to my parents. They don't understand. I don't podcast? even understand it, quite what? frankly. Yeah. I don't what are know. we even like, doing I don't even know how to our lives. get that. I don't even get podcasts. I don't know. I have a question, though. Um, what would you say is like your style or your process in the casting room? Like, Are you more of a collaborative person with the actor or you kind of because you know everyone's different they're like yeah they don't really say much thank you or you kind of more of like oh let's kind of work this out i try to apparently sometimes i'm not very successful at it but um i try to make it as relaxed as possible because i find if you're more relaxed as an actor you probably give something better performance wise but i'm also really quick and i'm, I'm, I'm I've, I've developed into kind of a stopper where like if you're in the middle of the movie. oh okay it's great that's great so start again because and I, if I'm stopping you I'm kind of digging you because I like what you're doing but it's not exactly how they want it to get the job so I want to sort of shape mm. an actor because everything's on tape now I would shape an actor's tape to what they want so they can get the job so it's kind of collaborative it throws a lot of actors off right I was um, gonna say I probably would throw a lot of people. They're like, oh yeah, my god, and I, and, I, I suck. and I don't really like, I, you know, again, I don't really think beyond my own little bubble, and I, 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 I kind of get that. But for me, it's like trying to sort of like get the job done. Like, oh, there's somebody that they're like, let me get the job done by showing them this actor, you know, and get into exactly where they want it. Um, I, th I think the days of like long auditions, collaborations, especially in TV, are long gone. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, again, I was really lucky with Cold Case. We are producer sessions would run like three or four hours and we would do wow. sometimes like 20 30 pages of scenes like it was like a it was like a whole thing that that show and, and when it was great but it's just just no time for that now when you're working with guest directors on a show like cold case are they always sitting in or are you very collaborative with those uh, guests well, on directors? that show was okay on that show it was it was specifically they would make sure they were everyone was very collaborative okay um because it was like a mini movie it really was it was it was probably i i, I was I would say I'm very lucky that I actually cast the show because most casting directors don't get that experience because it was all about the casting. It was really intense. The guest roles were always better than the regular roles. Um, mm. and, and they were, and each episode was so vastly different from the previous one. I would go from like the inner city serial killer of kids to like the Elvis, you know, era show with a musical, you know, the next week. So it was, nice. it was yeah, it was great to sort of do that. And sort a little of variety. Really, on your yeah. toes, yeah. I had the circus yeah. episode. I had, you know, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. they would throw me. They would throw us stuff that you would, your head would explode. But again, it was all really about. It was really all about the performance, and bringing the, the material alive. And it was great. And a lot of TV shows, most TV shows, aren't that way. Yeah. You know. So. And as we as we end this. A question for you. Put it out there in the ether. What is something on your bucket list? That you would. It's like love Cafe to Gratitude. You know, they ask you a question. It's actually. Oh yeah, that you're like, you know, I'd love to cast this type of show. Oh, in, in terms well, of casting. Oh, or in life. Um, and life, both. No, I don't, I don't think that way. I, I'm very, like, of the moment in terms of, like, I kind of love whatever I'm casting at the moment because I feel like, you know, what are you casting at the moment? Where can people find you? Yeah, what's uh, I guess what's your what are you working on right now? I just finished up a really great film called like A House on Fire about postpartum depression with a really great new director. It's Canadian, but it's really good. I'm very very proud of it. Uh, I'm looking for a job, so if anybody got anything to offer me? All right, all right, yeah. Aaron. Um, Aaron. 
Aaron has a couple commercials if you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> characters with rats on them. <laughs> that was a so one and done thing. I just suggested it one time. That's not how we do That's every audition. That's your thing now. That's your <laughs> thing. Yeah. You'll forever be remembered. I my bucket list probably would be like, I, I also, I'm a writer and I've sold a couple of things that, that I like but I don't love but it's sort of, I have a couple of scripts that I've just got done that I love. It's sort of maybe to, maybe to actually cast something that I wrote that I love. That'd be cool. Oh, no, that'd be awesome. That would be kind of an odd experience. Is it? Um, I mean, I've cast stuff that I wrote, but I wasn't like passionate about them. Mm. Which what? It's really bad. <laughs> what did you write? Like a deadly adoption type thing, or like what do you write? Like what do you like to write? Well, I like to write more. Uh, I tend to the darks. So I like horror. Like I like kind of like all that darker stuff. Darker stuff. Yeah. Nice. I mean, but I've sold. Um, I wrote one Hallmark movie in, in the midst of writing another one, so there's that. Which Hallmark movie? It was called All for Love, starring Sarah Rue. It was good. It was actually, it was cute. It was my mom movie. loves Hallmark movies. Does she really? Oh, my God. Every time. She, was, she just was just aired, in town. It just aired again. I probably. Like, I, yesterday or the day before. I might have seen it. it. They all kind of blend in after romance, a while. Romance novelist falls in love with a Navy SEAL that she's hired to be the consultant <laughs> of her new book. Ooh. Great log line. Thank you. <laughs> and I, and I worked long and hard on that log line. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So is, that's they're, very, they're really popular. That's very yeah. that was that was actually uh, apparently very popular because it, it aired Memorial Day of 2017. So it was it's the not first a, airing, and they aired it already like eight or nine times this year. So it's yeah. not a Christmas yeah. movie. It's not a Christmas movie. But that's, the sequel, that's good. But the sequel could be. You can enjoy it any time of year, actually. That's even better. Enjoy it because those Hallmark Christmas. Yeah, movies, so man, that, that's so not many. really my sensibility, which is kind of odd that I kind of wrote that. And I had a movie in theaters um, in October. It was a boxing drama. What was it called? Uh, Glass Jaw. You box? I feel like I heard of that. I don't. Actually, yeah. But you're just... I don't know anything about boxing. <laughs> but you... I know. It's, it's, did that's did you cast story. it or write it? Or both? both. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. I co-wrote it with the, the, the lead actor. And... Are you ever directing? No. I've turned down a couple of directing films. But you want to? I Of short films. Not like, you know. Okay. I mean, I'd be stupid to turn down and directing a feature. But of short films because I wasn't. Can you direct this podcast to success? That'd be nice. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know how to get a podcast. Like so, like you're, I'm the wrong person to ask. Yeah. Like, do you go out on your phone? I, I don't even know. I'm, like, how to just access any podcast? Yeah. No. <laughs> I, seriously, I'm like, I'm woefully like in terms of technology. I'm like stupid. We'll send you all the info. Yeah, so make sure on you your can phone, you pretty much summed it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you're gonna be like, God, what an idiot! <laughs> <laughs> I like, can see your face. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. If I don't, if I can't use it daily and it's readily accessible, I have no clue. Like I don't even think about it. So, I actually have one last audition question. Actually, well, we're out of time. We're out of time. All right. My, well, sorry. I'll ask my my friend. Actually, he produces the. I guess like it's like the number one podcast, the Anna Faris one. Oh, oh yeah, oh, it's, yeah. yeah. I one of that top. one. Yeah. yeah. Sim, I think he's on it. Too. She's good. She's, She's good. good. Like, I want to listen to it, but like I don't know how to get. I don't know how to get it. So I'm just like, <laughs> we're gonna show you after this podcast. Yeah, just Google it. <laughs> we will show him. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, 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 no, it's okay. I don't have. I'm not. I can't sit still for longer. Right. Hey, we'll, we'll get do, you there. Yeah, you listen while driving or. Yeah, in the yeah, car. But I don't have my phone hooked. Like I don't, traffic. Oh, I'm, I'm, that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. Another thing. No. I like music when I'm driving too. I do too. I like silence. I, I know how to turn on the radio. <laughs> oh, what music do you listen to? In your... I, don't, I don't even have, was it serious? I don't have any of that. Or Right. You didn't follow know. Howard Stern to serious. I did it. All right. But yeah. You can stream it on YouTube. You can stream it on YouTube, yeah. But it's, he's, he's sort of different. Yeah. So he's he's grown. He's, yeah, he's, he's changed grown. his Says style. Him. I still enjoy it. I, enjoy I still think he's the best interviewer yeah. there is out there. He'll get people to For sure. talk about anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. I did read he, he felt really bad about the Robin Williams thing. Yeah, yeah that's what article. he keeps saying. It's been going on yeah. press. Lately, to sell that book, but you had a question. Yeah, I had a question. Johnny. Oh, to wrap it up. I had a quick up. one. Quick question. Uh, in auditioning, how do you feel about an actor improving lines, or does, do you feel like they have to be off book, even if they know it? They're just kind of like. I think I think I used, to be, I, used to be, I used to be like you don't have to be an off book kind of cast director, but now as times have changed, I do think you have to be off book. I think it just makes for a better audition. What if you're just loose with the lines, but you're like well. I'm sort of a word perfect kind of guy. Okay. Um, because you're a writer. I'm a Good writer. to know. No, it's true. Good that to know. helps. And also, to, you know, knowing I'm really all about the material. And sometimes you change a word, it can change the whole meaning of it. Or sometimes you may even add like a comment that you sort of naturally add as a person. It could change the whole dynamic of that character um, and that scene. 
So I always say if you don't have permission to go off book or to improv, don't. Mm. I remember okay. I'm casting the film Buddy Boy that you were talking about. Some very, a very famous actor came in to read. And um, he was, oh no, it wasn't Buddy Boy. Was Space Buddy Between Boy. Us? No, 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 Love no, no, and no, Sex? No. It was a movie I got fired off of. <laughs> uh, wait, we want to hear this the assassination story. of Richard Nixon. Um, but we're reading an actor, a very famous actor, and he came in and he started. And I read with the actors when I'm, you know, when I put people on tape, and he started doing this, and I couldn't follow him because he changed. He's oh well, it kind of worked better for me for moving this over there and that over there, and he left the room. My director's like, why would I give him a job? He's already changed the script before he, before he got a job. Mm-hmm. You know, so I wouldn't do it. Good Will, tip. Don't do it, Joe. Will Ferrell. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. In fact, I just saw him at this actor in a TV show, a movie. Oh. Whoa, the one that changed all the lines? Yeah. Well, it didn't hurt his career. Whoa. No, it did not. Still doing okay. Still doing very well. All right. That, I have one last question. Sure. I said that last time. Uh, oh. This is not for me, but this is for <coughs> that poor every kid. Every other actor out there. For every other actor out there, actually, that poor kid sitting in his basement thinking, what am I going to do with my life? I want to be a casting director, but I don't know <laughs> I, how to start. I what do I do? Know either. That was I one of these know. questions, actually. How do I? How do they begin? I, you know, I, don't, I became a an intern, there. but now apparently interns are bad. Oh, really? Like you can't. Have right, interns. right. You were in the golden age of interns. I was in the back golden in age of interns. <laughs> you know, um, paid internship. No. I guess. I mean, like, you could do that, but I mean, why would I pay for an intern? I just pay for an assistant. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I used to have a ton of interns. God. Um, <laughs> I now, I now know it was I, very bad. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, uh, so you're saying there's no way to become a casting director now? At all. <laughs> None. It's, it's hopeless. I know. Look, look, you know. Good luck, little Billy. I, I would, I, I, I would, you know, start developing your own taste in actors. Like that's really, really important. I think a lot of people who start up in casting don't never sort of develop their own taste and sort of. I think that's really, really important. You know. Be really good at office work. There's a ton of office work, sort of clerical work and all that hmm. stuff. That's why you, you have the assistant, though. Well, you got to start somewhere. It's not like you could be like, oh, I'm going to oh. be a casting director tomorrow. You're casting, you know, right. Right. next Avengers movie. Um, it doesn't work that way. Um, Rolling calls, taking, right. taking, no, you know, you know filing, you know, filing contracts, stuff. everything, you know, and making coffee, right? Making coffee, right? No, I don't. I don't trust anybody. <laughs> well, oh, you seem uh, to enjoy that one. Hey, it looks good. like you finished it there. Um, I would love to intern. Yeah, I, just, I, I also it goes with being actors too. Like if you want to act or you want to be in casting, you've got to put yourself in the environment that where it's happening. That's why LA is a great place for actors and for casting because it is sort of still the center of the entertainment industry in this in this in this country. So, right. um, you know, go out meet people. You know observe, maybe say, hey, I'll run the camera for you for one day if you don't mind to see, all that kind of stuff. Hey, camera operating, yeah? Camera operator, yeah. Cool. You know, and just and then get to know actors. And then start casting little stuff on your own. That's how I did it, too. I, I, when I was at Stephen Cattle, a post-production supervisor, I was like, hey, I'm doing this film. You know, he asked one of the casting directors, she says, oh, I don't want to do it, but ask, ask Michael. Mm. And he did, and that was the very first movie I cast myself. Whoa, nice. I was still an assistant. So it is possible, Billy. It is possible. Keep your chin up. You'll get there, Billy. Um, Poor Billy. It's, I got sparked with another question. Okay. Sorry, I could ask you questions That's all day. I'm here. Um, I, I literally live like a minute away. Those so are two good, good questions. So you're not leaving. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, is that a question? question? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just looking at the camera. Okay. So He's bored. I, no, I'm not. I can tell. Totally bored. I'm not bored. Michael. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> Michael. So bored. You put an air on blast? I'm bored. I read people for a living. You're bored. Oh, <laughs> see, he, he's just offended because, you know, he's like, I really had this big no, no, commercial audition no. tomorrow. I was going to ask a question, but then Johnny was like, I'm going to ask a question. No, so, you can, dude, so ask a question, back. please. No, no, I want to hear yours now. Shoot, guys, you want to talk about this off mic? Okay. You're embarrassing me. I qu- my question is... Michael put me on blast. <laughs> <laughs> casting has obviously changed because of the self-tape. So I think one challenge for us as actors, and maybe for you guys as well, because you probably get a lot of tapes now... It's almost it, all, I mean, it's more than Everything's just all now. tapes now. Almost everything's all tapes now. So I think the, the biggest challenge for us, and I've had this discussion with uh, managers, agents, different different people, is that like now it feels like sometimes we have to be some sort of, we have to be the casting director. Yes. Because we, you know, we get the audition, we have the sides, but we have no direction. Right. It's like, all right, we're just going to, this is what we think, well, we're going to put it out there. I mean, who are you kidding? Sometimes you go into an audition, you have no direction either. True. True. But if, it, if we're like way off, there's no one to be like, hey, 
you know, hey, buddy. Well, you know what I'm saying? But how many times are you way off? They don't just tell you. Every off. time. You know, I would I never mean, no, know. Just kidding. I mean, it, it's. So I guess what is the what? Where's you know what? What's you? What do you suggest that we do? So with I cast, things like that. I cast uh, like seven of the movies I cast last year were all cast from my apartment in West Hollywood. Everything was self tape, and two were shot in Atlanta, one was shot in Boston, and mm-hmm. I'm talking even the one liners. So it's it's a part of the business. I think an actor has to have to really finesse. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, we put that now on you guys as well as actors, you know. But I think it also allows you to really work on something and really get to a point where you want to get to. Um, my suggestion for self tapes: find your in your your spot in your in your apartment, your house, wherever you live. That's sound is really good. You know, the backdrop is really good. Like, and this wall would not work, but that one, the gray one over there, might work. Um, Invest or invest in, you know, go to Amazon, get your your blue flat sheet, flat sheet, and just tack it up on the wall. Get your lighting kits. It's like thirty nine ninety nine on Amazon with the umbrellas. Put it, and you're you're good to go. But also that means as an actor, know what colors work for you, know how you look on screen, because now you're in charge of it. So you better, you know, you it's better off that you know what to do. And then as a self tape, I think the advantage of it is that you. have do it a hundred times to your satisfaction. I try to avoid doing that though because I feel right, like I, yeah, I you do it too many times, too many times and it's times like I could criticize myself on every little thing. Like, Aaron and I aren't above that doing it a hundred times I, <laughs> to get it right. I hate it. I try to do like maybe three or four and I'm alright, I'm done. You know? It but sucks it, or it know, does, And also you know? too, I also feel like with self tape, a lot of actors feel like they have to be stagnant. You know, if you're not given any specific directions so like, don't move. There's no reason why you can't move. I like I like movement in auditions. I like to see how an actor moves, how they hold themselves, and whatnot. Um, I like movement on the beats. Like if you know, if you're talking to a different character or some new information comes on, that's um, me. I never understood like you know. Also, props I, I, oh. in a self in a self tape. No props. No props. Okay. I mean, it's it really treated like an audition, but you know, except if you're doing it yourself, and you're taping it yourself. You but say you know, all, that being said, you also, in a really weird way, it's like you have to work the room on your own self tape. You have to really connect with whoever's watching that tape. So figure out whatever ways, maybe if it's looking directly at the camera at some point, you know, before your audition, as you're slating, something where you can sort of reach through the camera and really grab that viewer. Mm. Because mm. I, everybody's done it. I don't care who they are. I don't care what they say. We've all done it. And the amount of self tapes we get, you click it on for a second, you go, oh, no, boom. So it's really important how you start off that self tape. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Starting it off right. Sure. Starting off right. What about starting off camera? Do you think that's a, I, no? I, I no. never got that. Like okay. I don't. I don't. I mean, people in, in an audition room, it's like, oh, can I enter through the door? I'm like, like <laughs> why? What is it doing? Through Next, the door? it says it says <laughs> yeah. I enter through the door. And then half the time they're like they're waiting, and it's like you're like, are they going through that fucking door? Or what? <laughs> you know? But, and they're like, oh, were you were, were you ready? Did, or it's like I've done it for two. Like they just don't come back. I had a door. It was, it was in the cold case. I was at a door that sort of locked, and I always forgot to unlock it. So every time I was going, I'm like, sure. And I boom, and they're like, oh, I unlock the door because they're struggling with the door. And so classic. Yeah, but treat it like any other audition, like a, you know, like you're going into the room, right? In front of people. Right. Um, and I always, I always say treat any audition like you're, like a first date. You do everything you would want to get a second so date. So just try really hard. Try really hard. <laughs> yeah, don't be desperate. Put out. Read that. Be really eager. Put out. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> oh, come on, man. Oh, okay. It's not well, that kind you, of podcast. You're, you're assuming that if you put out, you're getting a second date. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Right. <laughs> right. So no callback. <laughs> no callback for you. Yeah. That, but, uh, that's why. Yeah. Love it. Any so other questions, question? guys? Yes. So my, well, I mean, get in there, I like Johnny's question, get actually, but uh, I was just going to ask about, uh, do you have any cool celebrity stories about, like, the celebrity I cast? But define cool. <laughs> like, Interesting out- to you. Outrageous. I mean, no, I mean. All right. I know. Hey, how are you, by the way? How are okay. you doing, man? No, I mean, celebrities, <laughs> so again, I, I, there's very few people that like, I sort of get, like, really excited. Oh, my God. Right. I get more excited if I find some find somebody new that I really love. Like that oh, gets cool. me really like, oh my god, I think I really love you. You know, um, but I, I'm not. I don't know, nobody. Really, it's not that nobody impresses me. It's like, you know, do you shop the uh, the sales at Whole Foods, or you just already know what you're getting before you before you go in? I'm a cook, dude. I'll go in there and I, I can linger there for hours. Like, oh, look at those peppers. Those <laughs> are interesting. Yeah, that's me. What kind cool. of food do you make? Favorite. 
pasta. No, 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 no. no. I, mean, I make pasta. What food do you hate? I don't like Indian food. Ooh. <sighs> That's going to ruin our sponsorship, Putting guys. Out there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Although I went to, my God, what was the guy's name? Bad Mash. No, I went to some sort of pop up thing on Sunday where somebody was on Chef's Table. Something. Oh, Chef's Table. It's yeah. a good show. But anyway, um, it's not that, you know, I just, I, the spices don't. There's different kinds of curries, you know. You don't have to just go with the one curry. <laughs> I, know, I know. I've had a ton of curry. I'm not, I'm not a, just not a curry fan. It's a, it's a bold flavor. It's bold, a bold flavor. Bold, very vi- um, you know. But I cook, you know, I'll cook anything. Strong yeah. smell. Yeah. I cook a lot. All right. All right. I think we've got it down. You got any questions, guys? Man, I appreciate you coming today, Michael. Thanks for having me, It was me, a guys. pleasure. It was good. Come yeah, back yeah. anytime. Let me know when I can actually hear this. Oh, yeah. Well, this is just for us. Yeah. We're not going to release it. Just going to put it in my pocket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, in about three weeks. Let's yeah. Look so, any uh, we'll tag you. where can uh, people get a hold of you? Yeah. Social media. Did no? you want to plug something? Do you want to plug anything? Do you want to plug anything you're working on? We're not on? trying to dox you or anything. No, no, no. no. <laughs> We're not trying no, to I'm not, harass I, I, you. I, I, here. I was saying, no, I, 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 you can send stuff to my my work email, which is michaeltesacasting at gmail.com. But if you abuse it, I will get you back. Well, sure. I always I, I do. I'd be like, you know, don't send me a fucking email every day. Hey, at least it's a response. That's what they want. I'll stop harassing you oh, on Instagram. A lot of people, Sorry. a lot of people like want to like plug their stuff at the end. We didn't mean to. Uh, it seems like you're listen, guys. Don't email this guy. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's fine. enough submissions it's already. No, no, I, I don't really mind unless you make a pain in the ass of yourself. That's when I do mind, and I'll right. you know, like I said, I'll get you back. Right. I'll start, start stalking you. Right. <laughs> By the way, thank you for uh, responding to my direct message. I wasn't sure on Instagram. Well, that's another thing. Uh, you know what I mean? Real quickly before we end, that's another thing that I understand. You know, cast directors are approachable. Like, we're mm-hmm. not like these mythic gatekeepers to like another kingdom or something. You well, know? you never so know. Some people don't like to, you know, because the Instagram could be personal oh, sometimes. No, hey. We're not, no one's that precious. <laughs> I mean, seriously, Just like, you know, you know, if I didn't want to answer you, I wouldn't answer you. And if I would say, you know, get the fuck out of here. I'd say that to Dan out. Bell. Just kidding. I love, I love <laughs> Dan guy. Bell. Dan Bell's he's, he's amazing. It, oh, is that? Casting director. Oh, okay. casting director. It's a peer? Cast peers? Johnny in a... <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know that many... He I does commercials a lot. I don't know a lot of... He does a lot of commercials, yeah. I know more agents, actors, and managers, you know. That's he's fair. A, I work with him a lot. He's a great guy, though. He's anyway. Yeah. Not bad-mouthing him. Love him. Hey, he's the man. All right. Okay. Give us the email. Great. Thank you, Michael, Thanks, for coming. Guys. Really Michael, appreciate your you're, time. You're the man. And may you guys can Why? check us out <laughs> on iTunes. What, and... What's uh, that all about? I mean, I, I saw, I haven't seen it, but the, is it people watching it? YouTube. Oh, he just noticed oh. the camera. Oh, we, 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 <laughs> no, I kind of knew it was everything. Hey, was we're like rolling. Hi. We, uh, it's, hey. it, our podcast is audio and video. See, It'll so, be on YouTube uh, as well. You're not okay. a big podcast guy, but something sometimes what I like is some people are more visual Wait, learners. I want to know then, why am I, and why the heck I'm not, I'm not the center, like, this is heavily oh, discussed. Yeah, heavily why, discussed. Why isn't he before ra- this. I, I suggested why don't we put the guest right here? <laughs> All right, so we've had that. We will we will we will workshop in this today because we we've, we've had this actually usually. All right, hold on. Johnny said I, I, I don't I, want to try. Hold my on. Profile. No, no. Ninety ninety percent of the time, the guest has been sitting on this chair, right? And then we realized it'd be time, better if the guest was here. Should have the guest okay, wait, wait. One time we had the guest here, and Johnny right? was, and this is Johnny. Oh my neck! I didn't like turning my head. No, this was the problem. I was sitting <laughs> like this the whole time, and the whole the whole time I'm just like looking this way, which is what I do every time. And then by the time the show was over, I was like. Dude, my neck is killing me. Which is basically what's all about you. I, I was exactly. like, exactly. <laughs> you know what? You know I what? Want be, I want to be like Jared Leto and and, and his tour. You ever seen Jared Leto and what's it? Thirty Seconds to Mars. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. The only band I ever see where the band other band members face him. <laughs> it. it was like Thirty okay. Seconds to Leto. My God. Thirty Seconds to Leto. There it is. Or that guy's kind Ridiculous. of a jerk. God, so, so stupid. He's a, he's a talented <laughs> actor though. I'm gonna give it to him. Good Requiem for a Dream. Need I say more? Yeah. yeah. Good. Dallas that's, Buyers that's, Club. That's, Dallas Buyers Club. That was more uh, good. the director. I mean, but it's hard to be bad in that role. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like, well, wait, Dallas Buyers Club? Yeah, it's he hard. Could've, he could have done it wrong. Yeah, but it's like Broad. the role is a great role where, yeah. like, you know, a lot of times just half half time is showing up and saying the words, like, oh my god, right. fantastic, right? It's like that woman in oh god, my season against trouble with these things. <laughs> it's like that. What's the actress in Roma? She was good. Oh, like, the, the Academy the, Award, good. I don't know. The main, the maid, the maid. Yeah, the 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 thing. She was well, good. Well. It wasn't but my you, favorite you, movie, but you know. Right, it wasn't mine either. But you kind of put your I enjoyed it. feelings and expectations on her without her actually, you know, living them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You kind of like you well, did I, a lot. The, the audience did a lot of the acting in that. Well, movie. she well, was that's pretty much playing herself. Yeah. But I think what it is is because, like, you know, 
she, you don't normally see somebody getting an opportunity like that to be in like no, such a which big is project. great. You know I, what I mean? And I and I think that's fantastic and, sh- and and more. But I mean, Academy Award. Yeah, I know. Well, that's how I, I felt agree. about. I agree. Casey Affleck in that one movie that he won the Academy Award for. Yeah, oh, I was uh, like Manchester. He, I was like they were United by the Sea. He was United, just yeah, <laughs> Manchester by the Sea. Yeah, exactly. I've never seen. It. I don't want to be that depressing. It's, <laughs> it's a it's a downer. Yeah. It's a real downer. I mean, essentially, he just you know played a depressed dude the whole time with a little range. I agree. Minimal range. Didn't really see a lot of emotion there, but you know. But anyway, for another podcast. Gentlemen, so we know. Yes, we're going to be trolled by Casey Affleck. The, we know that Michael hates Roma. Roma. We'd love got, to have either of them. We're going to pull that clip. Movie, but I was like, oh, Michael already, hates Roma. In this movie. Just kidding. Actually, yeah. I, I love the movie. The movie was very beautiful. I didn't love the movie. Looked great. Right, but in terms of a movie, I'm going to see again. No, no. I saw it once. I got I it. Mean, come on, thirty minutes. Let's go. Let's go. Something happened. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Funny, my gra- my it. grandma watched the movie. Doesn't speak any English. You guys have both met her. She's from Colombia. Nice lady, and great lady. She uh, she attempted to watch the movie, and I remember her uh, calling me and telling me, "Have you seen Roma?" And I said, "No, not yet, but I'm planning on it." You know, a lot of people are talking about it. She's like, "Oh my god, how how?" And just was, cut to a shot of a woman doing dishes. Cut to a shot of a woman sweeping. We get it already. Like, <laughs> what else is there gonna see? She's like, "I had to shut it off. I just didn't." And I'm I like, "Well, you know, Hereditary, was, best movie." I'm like, "All right." Anyway, what is hereditary? hereditary? Which one is that? With I heard that was Natalie really Portman. Good, actually. Natalie Portman. No, Tony Collette. Tony Collette. The, that. See, this is what. That's what. That's what pisses me off. Oh, I didn't see. A little bit is that woman gets nominated for Academy Award. Tony Collette, who's phenomenal in Bad Boys. In Bad, but in Hereditary, she's phenomenal. Like one hour photo. What she was. Was she in that movie? Wasn't she? Jurassic Park three. Isn't that Robin Williams, right? No, she's not Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, she, with Mike, <laughs> Willie Mage Macy, Tony. No, no that's, that wasn't. That's, that's, that's that was that's somebody, somebody else. That's, that's the Madam Secretary girl, uh, Taylor Leone. Yeah, uh, Taylor Taylor Leone, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I bet. But Tony I Collette is a really good. Sixth Sense, right? Sixth, Sixth Sense, Sense, yeah. Oh, yeah, she's okay. good. She's great. I mean, she's great in this. So is um, Alex Wolf. He's fantastic in it, too. And I heard that movie was really good. It's I didn't see it. Aren't they making another one? I thought there was like a preview for another one. I think no, it's the same no. director has got one. Oh, uh, that's called, what it is. It's called Midsummer. Oh. Midsummer, I think. It's some, that's what it is. Night's Dream. That looked pretty interesting, that's actually. Really, yeah, he's a, he's a really interesting director and, and writer. I want to see Rocket Man. I do want to see Rocket Man. Dexter Fletcher yeah. was an actor who always hired. He's a he's a he's a cool guy. So I'm interested to see what he does with that. Who? Oh, the, the director. director. Yeah, he yeah. was the one who saved Bohemian Rhapsody, right? He did. Well, I, know, I mean, it was two weeks, I guess. Well, saved. saved. Just finished it. Finished <laughs> it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But he was an actor, or maybe he still is an actor. But then I was hired for Love and Sex. Oh, until, like, really? We couldn't get his visa, or his visa wasn't ready, so we couldn't. Mm. You wanted to cast him as an actor for Love and Sex. He's and an it, actor. He's an actor. Yeah. And it, but his visa wasn't ready. His visa, or his, his agent said, oh, yeah, he's got a visa. Or and then it turned out he didn't have oh, a visa. There were some problems. Some problems. But now he's a big time As a big director. time film director. Cool. Wow. Good for him. I heard, I, heard, That's cool. I heard it's pretty good. I heard it's great. It looks like a lot of fun. I love yeah. Elton John. You, yeah. you like Bohemian Rhapsody, right? The movie? You didn't? No. Best editing. I, Academy Award movie editing. Was, the movie was flawed. I thought the, I thought the performance was strong. He's great. He, I mean, he's great well, in it. The movie I mean, had its issues. That's, but, a movie, you know. that's a movie that's saved by a strong performance. Exactly. Like that's that's really the music and the strong performance by nice. um, the main guy saved it. Made it Rami great. Malik. Rami Malik, yeah. yeah. I love yeah, it's not a good movie, though. Who are we kidding? It's definitely not best I, editing. I, I Worst it. editing. The way they incorporated yeah. the Queen music was great, and Remy Malik gave that character so much heart, Freddie's character. Yeah, but See, as a movie, it's like, I don't know. Just Aaron's like, not bored anymore. You got, you got, a, you piqued his interest. <laughs> oh, maybe that's because you shut up for two seconds, Johnny. Oh, oh. I'm just kidding, Whoa. buddy. I'm just kidding. End, on end of a note. podcast era. <laughs> on that it's a nice note, potting just, with you guys. No, it's I was, over. I was just uh, trying to throw it back on Johnny to take it off me. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyways, nice. I think that wraps it, up. wraps it up. Yeah. Uh, so go see Rocket Man. Yeah. Go see Rocket Man. <laughs> We're not officially endorsing that movie, but uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in. Are we still going? No, 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 sorry. Should oh, we, we should, we can keep going. Oh, we forgot to press record. Um, that was a good practice. We were like, what Michael. movie? What was it? It was like Endgame that never ended. I enjoyed, <laughs> I actually right. enjoyed that movie. I enjoyed it too, but it, come on. Like, it was I, a bit I, long. I had like five endings. Well, they had, the they, had, they had a lot to wrap up. A I lot of the, characters. The beginning was too long. Wrap it up all at once. Come on, who are we kidding? Yeah. I, I thought the beginning was the most intriguing part because it, for the, it didn't feel like a Marvel movie. Yeah. I thought, the I, first part I, of it. I enjoyed the movie. I mean, I don't, I still Look, don't Michael, we get it. You hated it. No, I don't. I say it. I liked. I did like. What's the other one before that? Infinity, Infinity War. War. I liked Infinity War. Too. Yeah, that was a good movie too. I liked that one as well. But I like the ending. Of, I like Iron Man. I liked when Iron Man did that thing at the end. Died. Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. If you haven't seen it yet, guys, the come mi- on. The, mo- the moment they gave him a kid, I'm like, oh, he's dead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sorry. And they took it away. If they haven't seen Endgame by the time this thing,
Uh, Actually, I'm gonna see Godzilla. I'll be watching. Dying to see that. It looks watch great. That. I like Thomas Middleditch, the actor. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nobody um, relates. Moving on. The uh, the trailer was cool. How they did uh, somewhere over the rainbow in the trailer. Michael, you're with me on this. I guys, guys, does the audience need to hear? That? I feel we should. No, this is the good banter. Right? Okay, cool. No, that's not. All it's right. I enjoy it. I, I love you it. Can you just cut it off anytime you want? Sure, I mean, of course yep. you can. So um, that is true. Anything with Gehedra or Rodan, I'm there. Come on. Who? The monsters. There's other other monsters in Godzilla. Oh, okay. How accurate is it to the original? <laughs> With oh, Ferris Bueller? Know. Well, the original Godzilla. This past, <laughs> God, this <laughs> past Godzilla has nothing to do with the original Godzilla. Rainbow but I mean Earth. the Japanese version, I guess. Well, which Godzilla? There's, there's, there's various. The Ferris Bueller one. Just you know, I, one thing I noticed about this Godzilla in the movie, he's got a bit of a dad no, bod, doesn't he? No, that's the original one. It's, it's the got Ra- Raymond Burr. He's got a bit of a gut. Right. Black and Godzilla. That's the original. I've you seen You guys notice that? I kind of did clips. notice, yeah. He's got like a small head and he's got the dad bod going on. Who, Godzilla? Godzilla. Well, he's the king of all monsters. I know, but why Why is he not fit? You know, like he's. Well, how do you know that's not fit? How do you know that's not fit for a monster? Because time's up. Hip- you know what? You're right. Hip- yeah. you're, you're I'm discriminating against monsters. Little a, hu- a human standard to a, a monster. Little reptiles Very shouldn't true. have to look at that perfect <laughs> bod in the media. It should be based on how reptiles actually look. I mean, he's right. fighting some pretty, some pretty gnarly. He's representing. Well said. Uh, just, <laughs> an, just an observation, guys. Observation. All right. Now should we go see it right now? Yep. Open's Friday. All right. Tomorrow. Oh. Rock Amanda does too. Ooh. I'm way more Godzilla. Godzilla. Now we just dated this podcast when it comes out three weeks from now. Oh, damn it. Anyway, okay. guys, we are on iTunes. Make sure you look us up, Surviving Hollywood, along with YouTube, Surviving Hollywood. And what's our Twitter, Austin? Surviving Holly W, because there's a character limit. And Instagram? Surviving Hollywood Podcast. We'll see you there. And thank you, Michael, for joining us. Bye, guys. Appreciate you're the, it. You're the man, Michael. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, see you guys on the next one.